Would you open your Bibles, please, to Revelation chapter 2? Revelation, the second chapter. We're going to be looking at the first two verses here and a little background for these verses. There's a message from God, actually from Christ, to a specific church in these verses. And as we look at these verses, we realize it's a church that was at Ephesus. Now, John was the one the message came to. The message came from Christ to John, the apostle, who was in exile on the island of Patmos. And this message was, first of all, to a particular church, to the church at Ephesus. Then, as time went on, it was to all of the churches everywhere, down through the centuries, including our church. And every individual. It is a specific message about a specific topic. And it's for all of us. But originally, it was for the church at Ephesus. And God had some things to say to the people of Ephesus. That would probably really shock them. He, first of all, started by complimenting them. He complimented them on the fact that they were still working. They were still um, laboring for him. They were still standing for solid doctrine. They weren't off on any side tangent. And they had even tested those who came in and said they were apostles. But when they tested them and examined them, they found out they weren't apostles at all. They were liars. And so he complimented them for that. Then he had something else to say uh, to them. They had left their first love. And uh, a simple study of these verses reveals, folks, that it is a very serious thing for a Christian or for a church. To lose their first love. It is a serious thing. Somebody might read these verses and say, well, I don't see what the big deal was. They were still working. They were still serving. They were still doing things. Danger. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor, I guess, and you think everything's fine. But he sees something in that blood work that is abnormal. It needs to be addressed. Well, our God saw something in the believers at Ephesus that was abnormal, and He had to address it. I want to speak this morning on the subject of this first love that they had left. Go to Revelation chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading at verse 5. Unto the angel, or the messenger, of the church of Ephesus write, this is Christ speaking, <clears throat> These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know thy works, and thy labors, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them who are evil, and has tried them, and who say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake, Christ, have labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, here it is, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from where thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else. 
I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy lampstand out of its place except thou repent. The lampstand was the place of service. The place where uh, they were allowed to give their light forth uh, to a lost world. So we see it's a very serious uh, situation. They thought everything was alright. But it wasn't. They had left their first love. Remember the first time you fell in love? I remember well the first time I fell in love. Some of you have heard this. But uh, I fell in love with an older woman. Yeah, she, and she was more sophisticated than I was. I'll never forget. She was ten. <laughs> and I was eight. And her mother had a big job. I mean, everybody knew her mother. She was the head of the 4-H club called the White's Pond Pioneers. Everybody knew Mrs. White. I mean, everybody, anywhere knew Mrs. White. And her daughter's name was Yvonne. And there was going to be a big 4-H club meeting one night at the white man's house. And my big brother was going and my big sister was going and I'm the little guy but I'm going to tag along too because I was a member of the White's Pond Pioneers. So boy, I was all excited. I'm going to go to that 4-H club meeting. I'm going to see Yvonne. Well, I decided that afternoon I'd call Yvonne. So I got on the phone and I called her. And her mother answered the phone, Whiteman Residence. And I said, is Yvonne there? And she said, yes, just a minute. And so she goes off to get her daughter to answer the phone. And all the time she's giggling to herself and she's thinking, Johnny Manley's calling my daughter. Isn't that cute? I wonder what he's going to say to her. I'm going to listen in on the extension. <laughs> I didn't know there was any such thing as an extension. <laughs> Pretty soon, Yvonne answers the phone. Hello? Hi, Yvonne. This is Donnie. Oh, hi. Hey, uh, I'm coming to the 4-H club meeting tonight. You're going to be there? Yeah. Good. Yvonne? Yeah. You think maybe we could take a walk? She says, I think so. Yeah, good. And then I said, Yvonne? She said, yeah. Do you think the moon will be out tonight? <laughs> she said, maybe. Well, that afternoon, boy, I... I got all cleaned up, got all fixed up living on the farm. You know, I wanted to be, I wanted to look sharp. Biggest problem I had was getting that rooster's tail to lay down on the back. Anybody ever have that problem but me when you were, oh man, that rooster's tail. I put some stuff on it. I don't know what I put on it, but I finally got it to lay down pretty good. Boy, I was excited. Got to the 4-H club meeting that night, walked into that living room. And it was wall-to-wall -wall people. I just, wall-to-wall. -wall. The couch was here and chairs were here. And there was adults and there were kids of all ages. And, and uh, I'm happy because I'm going to get to see Yvonne. Then Mrs. Whiteman starts coming over to me. Strange thing. Everybody was looking at me. And Mrs. Whiteman gives me this funny grin like she knew something that I didn't think she knew. <laughs> and she walks over and she says, Hi, Donnie. Why don't you and Yvonne go out and take a walk? Maybe the moon's out. <laughs> I stood there and everybody's laughing but me and I didn't know what to do. And they just laughed and laughed. That was the beginning right there. Oh my goodness. 
I had never been so embarrassed in all of my eight years. It was terrible. After that, everybody in the White's Pond Pioneers kidded me about the moon being on. Everybody in my family heard about it. My aunts and uncles and grandparents and cousins. Every time we had company, somebody brings up this, Hey, Donnie, is the moon been out lately? It was awful. I couldn't even walk down the street of my hometown, Norwich, without getting razzed. And for people I didn't even know, somebody come walking up to me and say, Hey, Donnie Manley, you and your mom been out to see the moon lately? <laughs> Company would come to the house. I'd conveniently stay upstairs in my room. I didn't want to go through that again. And finally, they'd call me to come downstairs, and sure enough, here comes the moon thing again. Over and over. Hey, Donnie, you think the moon will be out tonight? Goodness gracious. It was so bad, I didn't think I could take much more. I've had a lot of time to think about that. And I think that's probably why I'm so shy and introverted today. <laughs> it's a sin to lie. First of all, well, my real, that was puppy love, you know, you understand that. My real first love is sitting here on the front pier. She's much better this morning than able to be with her. When I met this gal, I met her at Holmesville Baptist Church. That's a church where we were both saved. A little nothing place uh, going on a, on a highway through from one little town to another. A blue place called Holmesville, but a lot of people have been saved there. And when I saw Ann uh, and I got to meet her, a bluebird started flying around my head. Sirens were going off, lights were flashing. Gabriel flew down from the <laughs> came right in front of me, took an arrow out of his quiver, boom, hit me right in the heart. And then Michael flew down with a big mallet in his hand, flows right down, hits me right over the head, knocked me goofy. And I've been goofy for this woman ever since. First of all, The first love of Revelation 2-4 is the first love a believer has for Christ after salvation. You, you remember. Let's make it personal. Let's make it your first love. I don't know how you were saved. Our stories are probably similar. All of our stories are similar. And all of our stories are, are quite unique. But in some ways they're very similar. In some way, you heard the gospel, if you're saved. You saw your need of Christ. <coughs> and you placed your faith in Christ as your Savior. And He saved your soul. Wow! When He saved your soul, He also came to live within you. The Spirit of the living God immediately took up residency in your heart and life. It changed things. There were some new things added to your life. You suddenly wanted to study the Bible. You wanted to hear the Word of God. You wanted to pray more than you'd ever wanted to pray before. You loved the Christian songs. You loved what was going on in your life. You didn't quite know how to express it, but you really wanted to tell people. You were excited about telling them. Not that your cholesterol level had dropped, or that you had cut your golf score by uh, two strokes. You wanted to tell them what Christ had done in your life. First law. 
It is so neat to see a believer, a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, with that first love. It's so easy for us to, lo to lose it, leave it. We can get it back, but it's so easy for us to, 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 to get away from it. We remember what Christ did, and we're amazed. Well, the problem in Ephesus was the believers there had, had left it. They were busy. They were doing things. They didn't think they were a dying church. They were doing things in the name of the Lord. Nevertheless, God sees things differently than we do. And what Christ told this church was, you better remember, you better repent, and you better get back to the first things, or else I'm going to take away your lampstand. That is the place of service, the light that they were to use to shine forth the things of God. It's easy to lose our first love. It's, it's really, it's so easy to lose our, our first love. It's, it, it's a difficult thing to stay on that cutting edge where God wants us to be. It's a daily thing, folks. We've got to spend time with God every day. That's why we hammer away in our churches. Are you spending time with God? Are you spending time in the Word? Are you confessing your sins every day? Are you walking with God? Because it's so easy. This old nature, this arm to represent the old nature, this the new. This old nature never goes away once we're saved. Once we accept Jesus, we got a new nature, and that's wonderful. But this old nature is going to give us trouble all of our life. If you feed it, boy, it'll grow, and it'll give you trouble. And it's always going to be there, uh, ready to, to give us trouble. It's very easy to lose uh, the first love. Now, there are um, basically three steps involved in regaining the first love and staying where God wants us to be. Basically, two steps in regaining. But then there's an extra step if we're going to stay where He wants us to be spiritually. And I want us to take a look very briefly at these uh, steps. Because no doubt I'm speaking to some folks right here in this room, not pointing any fingers, um, not preaching at you, but want you to understand this. Um, been saved a lot of years and, and uh, made a lot of mistakes uh, along the way. And will probably make a lot more before uh, life is done. But I want you to understand something that I've learned about of this subject called first love and that is this it's real easy to lose it but friend if you've lost it there's a way back and he wants you to come back to that place of first love you can't lose your salvation that's secure Christ saw to that but you can lose your special place in his service he wants you back. Let's take a look at uh, Scripture. We'll find it all here in verse uh, 5, I believe. <clears throat> the first word in this verse is remember. Remember, therefore, from where thou art fallen. Um, that's the first step right there. Remember. What are we to remember? Why? We're to remember what we had. What we had when we first found Christ, or when He found us, we had joy. We had joy galore. We kid ourselves. Oh, I still have joy. Is it like it was? Or is there a difference? We loved God's Word. We couldn't wait to spend time with God in His Word. Oh, I, I still love God's Word. Is it the same as it was back then? Or has it changed? We love the fellowship when we got together with other Christians. Oh, it was so wonderful to share the things of God together. We loved going to church. We loved the music and we loved the fellowship and we loved the preaching of the Word and the teaching of His Word in Sunday school. And sometimes 
Uh, back then we, we felt like shouting. Sometimes we probably did in our automobiles. We probably said, oh, God, praise you for what you've done in my life and what you're doing. You've been so good. Praise you. Sometimes we feel like cutting out in a, in a song of praise to God. First love. Remember, said the Lord. Memory is often the very first thing that sparks an interest in the believer to get back to God. Remember the prodigal son? The first thing that, that when he was so far from God, when, 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 when he'd lost it all, he'd spent his fortune, he was in a far off land, he was eating pig food, you might say. And the Bible tells us he began to remember what he had back there when he was with his father. I wonder, my friend, if right now you might be remembering something that you once had, but haven't had for a while. The next thing he said in verse 5 is, is repent. Look at the verse again. Remember, therefore, from where thou art fallen, and repent. That's the, the second thing right there. Repent. The, the Greek word is metanoia. Metanoia. And uh, metanoia is a, is, a, is a change of mind. What happens is we make up excuses. We are great for doing that. Jeremiah 17, 9, I think it is, says, The heart, that's the mind, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Here's what our minds tell us when we've lost our first love. Our minds tell us, I'm still okay. Yeah, I've got a few hang-ups, but that's not my fault. <coughs> you see this, you see that. It's amazing. We convince ourselves we're okay. And that's why repentance is needed. We need to change our mind and agree with the Heavenly Father. We need to stop making excuses. Stop denying uh, our sin. And agree with God. The prodigal son repented. Luke chapter 15 and verse 18 tells us he repent, he changed his mind. He got back on track. Real quick. No excuses. We've been there. Probably uh, all of us have been there. You should circle that word repent in verse 5. And I want to tell you, friend, the hardest thing for us when it deals with the subject of repentance is the acceptance of personal responsibility. Personal responsibility for our sins and our failures. Well, you see, this, uh, well, you got to understand uh, this or that, or, or someone this or someone that. Repentance is when we say... It's all me. It's my fault. There's no one to blame but me. I've sinned. And that's what the prodigal son said when he went back. He said, I have sinned. He said it before he even got back. I have sinned. And then there's one other thing once we remembered where we were, what we had, and once we've repented, Let's read the verse again, verse 5. Remember therefore from where thou art falling and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy lampstand out of its place except thou repent. Now, these are not harsh words from the Lord. He is merely telling them, warning them lovingly what they need to, uh, to do. They're to repeat the things that they had done. What was that? Fervency. 
Fervency in service. Fervency in worship. Urgency in their witness. You remember how it was when you found Christ and you knew He was the answer. And suddenly you realized people all around you in your family, in your neighborhood, they were lost. They needed Christ. There was a fervency in your witness. You didn't know how to tell them. You, you stumbled around. You, you tried and you did your best. And you prayed for them. But if you've left your first love, if you've left your first love, you no longer have that fervency. You no longer have that burden for the lost. Get it back, Christian. Get it back. Repeat the things you once did, says the Lord. There's a more of a deep spiritual life when you spend your time with God, that, that alone time, that, that time just you and God in the Word. It becomes so personal. God is speaking to you through His Word. Remember how it was? Oh, it's wonderful. Now, these are the steps involved. Remember? Memory. Repent. Agree with God. And repeat. Repeat the things you did formally when you had your first love. Now, these steps are not too uh, difficult to, to understand. I mean, that's ABC. Not too difficult to understand. I do not think that you can do step two um, without the Lord's help. I don't think any of us can. But I tell you what, the Lord comes rushing to that person who's willing to repent, who's willing to see it as it is. The Lord comes rushing in to help you. And then He'll come, He'll stay close to you and help you to do the things you once did. Oh, He's such a loving, gracious God. He gives us what we need so we can do the things that we need to do. So, what happened in Ephesus? I mean, the Lord sent this message to the church of, of Ephesus. Um, what happened? Did they, did they get their act together? Well, um, apparently, the church in Ephesus got their act together at least for uh, a time and because we know the church was there for some years after that. And so they apparently did. But eventually some future generation of believers at Ephesus apparently did not. Because we know from the history books that there came a time when the Turks came. And the Turks destroyed that city and that church. And today, where there was once a glorious city in Asia Minor known as Ephesus, today there's just a pile of rocks. That's a very serious uh, commentary on what can happen. Um, we've talked about Regaining the first love. And now just, just for a moment, how to maintain that first love. If you're in a place where you can say, I still have it, I still have it, or I, I lost it, but I've, I've got it now. I've got that first love now. You must be on guard, all of us, from the pastor on down to the, to the newest believer. We all have to be on guard continually um, because we have that sin nature that wants to sin. Um, we want to be sure we're having close, intimate fellowship uh, with God. And the only thing that hinders that close, intimate fellowship is unconfessed sin and not spending time with God. God has appointed one food for our spirits one food, divinely appointed of God, it is the Word of God. This is food for 
our souls and our spirits. Amen? Amen? This is what we need, and we need it regularly. We need to dine on the, the Word of God. Can you truthfully say, yes, yes, praise God. I have my first love. If you can, praise the Lord. Good. But if you can't, dear friend, if you can't truthfully say, according to what God is saying to you in your heart, you know, I really, I really don't have that first love that I once had. You need to act quickly, friend. I'm your shepherd, I'm your pastor, and I tell you that with a heart of concern. But the choice is yours. You are the only one that can make that call. If you need Christ's help to get back, He'll help you. But uh, this is a serious thing. Look at verse 5 once again. This is a message from Christ. First, it was a message to the church at, 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 at Ephesus. And then uh, it was a uh, message to other churches in that area. And then as the uh, Bible was written, it became a message to all Christians everywhere. It's a message to you and I this morning. It's a message to everyone. Verse 5, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have something against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Can you get it back? Oh yeah, you can. Verse 5. Remember therefore, from where you are fallen and repent, do the first works, or else I'll remove your place of service, except thou repent. What are you going to do with this, dear friend? Will you... What will you do with Christ's message to you? It's to you. It's personal. It's to me. It's to you. It's to each one of us. What do you do with it? I know what you should do with it. If you do not have that first love, what you should do is remember where you were and say, Oh God, with your help, I am changing my mind at this instant. I want to get back where I was. I want your blessings. I want to be used of you, God, with whatever life I have left in me. I want to be used of you. And dear friend, if you're here this morning and you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, He loves you. He died for you. He was buried. He rose again the third day. And He's willing to save you if you'll accept Him by faith as your Savior. Would you bow your heads, please? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. First of all, friend, if you need Christ as your Savior, ask Him to save you right now and He will. That's all there is to it. Just tell Him, Lord, I believe you died for me and I need you. I ask you to be my Savior. I'm trusting in you. Then call on His name. Jesus Christ. Please save me and He will. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Will you come back today? Will you come back to that first love? You know, that love you had. Remember? Remember how it was? Remember how it is? Will you come back? That's what he's asking you to do. Come back. Come back in your mind right now and tell him, Lord, with your help, I am changing my mind about some things and I'm going to get back on track tell me at the door this morning that you've made that decision. Father in heaven, thank you for this time we've had together. Lord, thank you for these, these instructions you've given, first to a church, then to the whole church of Christ everywhere. 
bless the scripture that we've looked at and the time we've shared together today. In Jesus' name I pray.